You can't mix together two items that are unmixable. It's impossible. Or can you? Today on the Carefree Cook's Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cook's Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cook's Code. Welcome back to the Carefree Cook's Code, everyone. I'm Chef Todd Moore. Uh, we meet at noon every Tuesday, Eastern Time, and we try and break the Carefree Cook's Code to become truly empowered and free in our cooking. First, I apologize for all Facebook issues. Uh, I don't control Facebook. It's just, it, I post, you know, it's, we're going to be live at noon, and Facebook decides to call it 9.30 p.m. I have no idea why. I post uh, one item. This is where the live is going to be, Facebook decides to put it somewhere else. So I'm working on these issues, but they're Facebook issues, and I apologize for all the confusion. I try and do my best with uh, what Facebook offers me. Hey, look, if you are not a carefree cook yet, you're missing out because we're the carefree cooks. We create our own recipes. Uh, we bring our friends and family together because of our cooking. That's one of the things that great cooking does. We learn every time we cook. Recipes don't do that for you. Being a carefree cook does. You define your own cooking style when you practice pro methods and you wind up loving your cooking. And that's the whole thing that we learn about here in, uh, in the Carefree Cooks community. Summer is here. You know I'm very excited about summer. You know I'm very excited about summer cooking because we've been talking about that the last two weeks, how cool summer cooking really is and how it's different different than winter cooking. But before I get into that, I do have a what am I for you today. Here's our what am I right in the comments below. What is this thing? And I'll try and help you with some definitions that looks like some kind of herb. It looks like a, a bunch of herb. Then it looks like some nuts, maybe uh, seeds and a pine cone there. And then there is a uh, famous cartoon character. So you put those three things together. It's the what am I in the Carefree Cooks Code today. So what I wanted to talk about today is, of course, uh, more about summer cooking and more about specifically cold sauces. And this is something that a lot of people don't even consider when they change their cooking over from winter to summer. This is the same time that you change your wardrobe over from winter to summer. This is the same time that, I don't know, you take the pool, the, the lounge chairs out, put them by the pool. This is the time that you scrape the barnacles off the boat. This is the time that you change the batteries in your smoke detectors and set the clocks forward right, for spring and summer. You do so many things to prepare for the new season, but yet if you're still making thick gravies, if you're still making really heavy food, then you're going to wind up like a little lethargic. And that's what we've been talking about. So two weeks ago, we talked about salads. Today, I want to talk about cold sauces, and that means salad dressings. Now, salad dressings, you have to think of like a cold sauce, because in the salad dressing aisle, if you go to the grocery store, you can get endless choices there, right? And you, you can get every kind of flavor you can imagine, but you know what? If they can make all those flavors, all those things up on the shelf, Shelves, well, then so can you. You can make all those flavors as well. You think any of that is complicated? Any of those bottled cold sauces on that shelf? None of them are very complicated. It's one of the simplest things that you can do in your home kitchen, but yet it's a $3 billion a year industry. People buying cold sauces, but making hot sauces. And you know, you can do this without the binders, without all the fake ingredients. So look, don't think of a dressing as a bottled condiment. Don't think of it like it's ketchup or mustard. Think of these salad dressings like they're a cold sauce. Think about this. You don't go out and buy bechamel sauce, right? 
butter, flour, roux, milk, bechamel. And then you, you put cheese in it and make a cheese sauce, or you mount it with mustard or crayfish tails or any of these things that you create small sauces from that mother sauce. But do you notice there's no jar of bechamel? <laughs> there's no bottle of bechamel for you to buy. You don't buy cooked sauces. And why would you buy cold sauces is the question that I would ask. So if you think of your salad as an uncooked entree, okay? I tried to touch on this two weeks ago when we talked about salads. If your salad is heatless cooking, if it's a green salad or even if it's a chicken salad or a tuna salad, any bound salad of that regard, if you're thinking of your salad as an uncooked entree, then you got to think of the dressing as your sauce, as if it were a cooked sauce. So if you think about a salad dressing, as a cooked sauce, think about how much care and love and skill you put into making your gravies in the winter, making those thick, heavy sauces. But you know what? In the summer, you just go to the store and grab it off the shelf. Well, I think your dressing needs a little bit more respect. If it were thought of as a cold sauce that goes on an entree rather than something in a bottle you shake on some lettuce, you would give it a lot more respect. And that's the goal that I want to get to today. Part of breaking the Carefree Cooks Code is looking at some of these things in a different way, is categorizing them so then you can start to put your creativity into it. So salad dressings are simply a liquid or like a thickened liquid, a semi-liquid, that's used to season salads. Now here, woo, this might be another mind-blowing aha moment for you because a salad dressing is a seasoning, right, for that lettuce. It, it is part of, that's going to put more flavor in there. So always remember the difference between flavoring and seasoning. When we cook with heat, when we have the heat cooking, right, if you season something, you're bringing the natural flavor out of it. If you flavor something, you're changing that flavor altogether. If you put a really heavy sauce on a chicken breast and you can't tell if it's chicken anymore, you've flavored it, all right? I've been down this road before. But a seasoning is what chicken makes taste more like chicken. So your cold sauces, they really say, serve the same function as a sauce, right? They're going to do all the things that a hot sauce sauce does, they're going to add moisture, they're going to add flavor, they're going to add nice texture and mouth appeal to your cold entree, and they add appearance to it as well. They, they add a shine, they add a glistening, and they work in harmony with all the other ingredients. How many times have we talked about harmony in plating, in sauce making, in seasoning? We're always talking about the harmony of the ingredients. So for you to make it actually so much easier for you to create your own cold sauces, to start making your own dressings they're so easy you don't need to buy the bottles what I do as you know with just about everything is we'll categorize them so as soon as you can put these things into little packets in your mind ah dressing packet oh what a good pun I didn't even realize it dressing packet never mind so if you can compartmentalize these things in your mind if you know the four categories of dressings then you can start to invent the ones that you really desire with using the ingredients that you want so the first is a vinaigrette a vinaigrette dressing then we have thickened dressings and remember we're talking about heatless cooking so I'll touch on that again we have emulsified dressings we'll touch on that quickly and then finally we have cooked cooked dressings. Now, we don't really do cooked dressings in the summer because we're trying not to cook so much. And again, since the flavors are not modified by heat, are not modified by any cooking, having the best ingredients is really, really important Have, because they're, they're not heated. They're not made sweeter. They're not made softer. They're, they're, they don't reduce. They don't lose uh, moisture. They don't evaporate. It is what you got. What you see is what you get. <laughs> so th they're very important important to have the right ingredients and all salad dressings pretty much have the very same elements and then you get to choose. So the first thing in a salad dressing, a vinaigrette we're talking about now, is some kind of oil. And, you know, get beyond olive oil. Why don't you expand a little bit? Expand to walnut oil. Expand to truffle oil or, or peanut oil, hazelnut oil. You know, go... Some of these things are quite expensive, but 
They are so pronounced of flavor, you'll find just a few drops changes the flavor of your salad altogether. Next, in a vinaigrette, you need an acid and everybody uses vinegar. Good choice. Balsamic vinegar, apple cider vinegar, uh, rice vinegar, white vinegar, flavorless, or a red wine vinegar. There's an endless number of them. But how about expanding your thought process and bringing in other acids? Forget about vinegar when you have a really nice citrus juice. You could use orange juice or grapefruit juice or lemon juice or lime juice or, or anything that you can throw through your juicer that is an of acidic nature, you can add that. And the acid is always what cuts through the oil. Those two things work together. There are a lot of flavored vinegars. There are liquors that are very heavily acidic. Ports, uh, late harvest wines that are really sweet, things like that. The third part is a seasoning. Now again, let's just not do salt and pepper. We don't have to do just oregano, thyme. We can expand and use some of the condiments in our refrigerator. You know, it doesn't have to be just dry things that you shake on your vinaigrette to give it seasoning. How about some sriracha sauce or some soy sauce or some honey? You know, these are condiments that you have in your pantry right now that can change your basic Italian vinaigrette into something really interesting, something really different. So you put those three things together, an oil and an acid and a seasoning, you've got a vinaigrette and you shake it all up, right? You shake it, shake it, shake it. You get a mixture that will stay together temporarily, okay? This is a temporary emulsification. I'm sure you had one of these in your house when you were a kid. You, you probably have one now, right? You remember the cruet with the dry uh, packet in there that you mixed in the vinegar and the, the oil that you wanted? Well, look, we, we can do better than that, right? Because that shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it is only good for a few minutes and then it starts to separate. So if you don't want your vinaigrettes to separate, start thinking about adding a thickening agent to them. So the first thickening agent that we can think of is some kind of emulsifier or thickener. And this is where you get into cooked dressings as well. A cooked dressing can use a cooked thickener also, uh, like a cornstarch slurry, something like that, or even a cooked fruit compote. If you um, cook down some strawberries or some berries and then strain them and then use that, it will thicken your dressing as well. Uh, heck, you could even use yogurt, um, sour cream, gelatins, uh, fruit juices that you can thicken with a cornstarch slurry. That's if you want to turn on the oven. Okay. That's if you want something more than a temporary emulsion and you want to turn on the oven and, and cook something that's going to be your binder. But you know, there's so another way that you can go as well is an emulsified dressing and an emulsified dressing is something that will stay together indefinitely. So your vinaigrette in your seven seasons cruet, whatever it is, you shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. And then it, it separates, you know, it's good. It's a good workout for your bicep. Uh, and then it separates. But if you want something that stays together, you're going to need an emulsifying agent. And the emulsifying agent is the thing that takes two unmixable items and it brings them together. It will hold them in suspension permanently. And I'll give you the example that you have in your pantry right now is mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is an emulsified cold sauce. Mayonnaise is egg yolks and oil, pretty much. You can make your own mayonnaise any day of the week. If you have a, a blender or a Cuisinart mixer, even if you've got a strong bicep from shaking your vinaigrette, then you can whisk it <laughs> and, and use mechanical uh, effort, some elbow grease to make your uh, mayonnaise or a Caesar dressing as well is a great a example of a, a, a dressing that is held together permanently because of the emulsification holds the oil in the water or the water in the oil in suspension on a permanent matter. And you know, this is where the ingredients really matter less. Uh, you know, where I said before your salads and your vinaigrettes, very important to have really good olive oil. If you're using olive oil, very good vinegar because they're not cooked, they're, they're, they're raw. But when an emulsification begins, it, it changes the flavor of the ingredients. You're not cooking, you're creating two unmixable items, bringing them together to something that can't be broken because it's really the emulsification process that becomes so important, emulsifying these two things and holding them together. So if you're going to make your own dressings, you need to think about either a vinaigrette, 
where it's simply oil, acid, and seasoning, shake it up, temporary emulsification. If you want to make ranch dressings, Thousand Island dressings, blue cheese dressings, things like that, those are thickened dressings, and they generally start with a emulsified product. They start with mayonnaise or sour cream or buttermilk. You know, I was looking up stats for this presentation today, and do you realize that ranch dressing is by far and away the number one dressing? It's something like $139 billion, uh, I'm sorry, $139 million spent on ranch dressing. And to me, ranch dressing is mayonnaise, sour cream, and buttermilk with like some dill and maybe some lemon juice. I mean, it's the easiest thing ever. So vinaigrette, shake it, shake it, shake it. It's temporary emulsification. Mayonnaise based or sour base, cream based or something like that uses an item that is already emulsified. Or if you want to make your own Caesar dressing, then I've got a video that I can show you that will take you through the steps of creating your own emulsification. Our Caesar dressing is the same type of thing. It's an emulsification process. And here are some of the ingredients. You can use uh, any ingredients that you'd like. I've got some garlic here, some diced garlic. Actually, since it's out of a jar, I'm going to add some of that garlic kind of liquid to it as well. Some garlic, and this time I'm going to use the pasteurized egg yolks. Um, we'll make this a little safer because this is going to sit in my refrigerator a little bit. An indiscriminate amount because I'm going to do this by texture. I want to see it uh, come together like a Caesar dressing would. I've got some Dijon mustard that we'll add there as well. Some balsamic vinegar. Just a little bit of balsamic vinegar, very nice. Uh, some red wine vinegar. This you don't have to follow. You can use any ingredients that you'd like. It's the emulsification process that's the most important thing to consider here. And lastly, what would be uh, Caesar dressing without a whole bunch of Parmesan cheese? We'll go ahead and add that to our food processor as well. What are we looking for? Well, it's the emulsification process that we want to start. And now begins the emulsification process. Olive oil, once again, added in a very slow stream, tilt up a little bit there. There you go. Added in a very slow stream. So when I add just a little bit, stop and look at it. Well, look how watery this is. Look how loose. Does that look like a Caesar dressing to you? Do you think that's going to stick to any kind of lettuce? Most certainly not. So we know that we need to continue our emulsification process. I didn't measure any of the ingredients in there. How can I possibly measure the olive oil? What I'm going to do is again, nice slow stream in increments until this comes together in the consistency that I would like. As I continue to add that in a slow stream, I can hear the difference in the food processor that it's no longer watery. All right. But you can see the difference now. This is much thicker than before. Mm. And a taste of it is vinegar and garlic and so on, but that still looks a little too thin for what I would want. So back on the food processor and further emulsification. What we're looking for here is the consistency of the final dressing. Certainly not measuring the ingredients. And now I've got what I'm looking for. Look how nice and thick our Caesar dressing is, and this is the egg combining with our vinegars, our previously unmixable items that the egg yolk has brought together in an emulsion. emulsion. So when you start putting together your cold, heatless entrees this summer, and I don't mean that in a negative way, the things that you don't need heat to cook, uh, <coughs> excuse me, your green salads, bound salads, things like that, think about the dressing as a cold <coughs> sauce. <clears throat> Pardon me. Think about the dressing as a cold sauce and then you'll give, give it a lot more respect. Your hot sauces, your gravies, you work so hard on them. How about a little bit more effort for the uh, summer sauces, the cold sauces as well, because they'll make all that great summer cooking so much cooler. Uh, let's go uh, to our Carefree Cooks community and uh, see what the dish of the week is, because you know I've been talking about salad dressings and summer cooking, so I go scrolling through our Carefree Cooks community and I'm looking for summer foods. Betty was the first one that grabbed my mind, uh, my eye. Betty's making 
and some great fish tacos, and instead of a side of heavy black beans and beans and rice, it's summertime. Cooking needs to be lighter. Cooking needs to be cooler, so she did a coleslaw. Now, what do you need for coleslaw? Yeah, you need a coleslaw dressing. You need a bound dressing, something that's going to start with mayonnaise, an emulsified product. You see where I'm going with all this. Uh, next, uh, Beverly did a beautiful T-bone steak on the grill. Actually, I think her husband did the steak on the grill, but do you serve it with mashed potatoes? Do you serve it with heavy rices? No, she did this beautiful side salad to go with the steak. It lightens up the outdoor grilling for the summer season. Well done. I like it. And a vinaigrette on there. Here was one that was really, really cool. And Moro, he proved my point before I ever got to it. Moro did a green mayo from pea pods. So he took the, the pea pods, I guess he had fresh peas, he shucked the peas, he kept the little the little round part, they're the good part, and then you got those pea pods, so he put them through a juicer, he got this green juice, egg yolks, uh, uh, oil, and then the green pod juice makes that beautiful green mayo, I thought that was so cool. Uh, Darcy did this beautiful Caesar salad for dinner, it's heatless cooking, right? You don't have to heat up the oven or the stove or even the barbecue grill in the summer. You can make yourself a really nice summer salad with something like, uh, looks like hard poached eggs there. Uh, hard simmered eggs. You know I don't use the word boil. Uh, so there's a really nice dish from Darcy as well. And Anne, this really impressed me because I like when people mention my name. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. My ego, you know my ego's not that sensitive. But I do like when people take the inspirations that I give you and run with it. So so Anne said that after watching Chef Todd's salad video, I guess this was a week ago, she decided to make a summer fusilli salad, a pasta salad. Fusilli is, you know, curly corkscrew kind of pasta. So she makes a base of a spinach florentine uh, and a cheese pasta sauce she had before, added a little bit of mayonnaise to it, which is its own emulsified cold sauce, and then added some Italian vinaigrette. So just think about this for a minute. Uh, sauteed like spinach, florentine with cheese, mayonnaise, Italian vinaigrette, then some celery, mix that up with the pasta for it made this cold sauce to dip it with, and then a ring of iceberg lettuce, shredded Parmesan. Thanks, Chef Todd, she says, for the inspiration. And that's why I do the Carefree Cooks Code. That's why I'm online every day, every morning, answering dozens of questions hundreds of interactions every day. I wish I could get to every single one of them, but I can't. That's why. When you write, Chef Todd, thank you for the inspiration, that's why I do it. That's why I do all this stuff, because I just love to hear from everyone to say, you know, I never even thought about that. I never thought about making a vinaigrette with orange juice or grapefruit juice. I've always used vinegar. I've never thought about maybe my favorite Italian dressing I could whisk some mayonnaise into, or I could put some sour cream or make some, make some mayonnaise and include it in there. It's these aha moments that, that when you get them and then you post your photo and you're like, look, Chef Todd, look, look what I made based on what you said. I love it. Oh, just keeps me going. And you know, again, summer cooking is here. And, and when summer cooking is here, you got to change the what. You have to change the what you cook, and you also got to change the how you cook for the summer season. And this, again, means different equipment. It means different skills. It means a different approach to the food, finding different foods, keeping them fresh. It's all very important this year, and that's why I want to try and bring you through the summer cooking season. Uh, we do have the what am I. Here it is. It, it looks, I was looking in the comment during, comments during the video. It doesn't look like I fooled anybody with this. It is, uh, looks like some basil up there, some pine nuts, pignoli, and there, of course, is olive oil. Olive oil, you get it? Yeah, I didn't fool anyone. But the reason that I wanted to give you the answer of pesto, why do you think that is with today's lesson? Pesto is an emulsified sauce, believe it or not. So when you grind up your basil leaves or cilantro leaves or parsley leaves, you can make a pesto out of any green leafy herb if you wanted to, but the water comes out of them. Then you add olive oil, not the cartoon character, the actual olive oil. You add olive oil, and what have you got? You've got two unmixable items again. You've got the heavy water content of the herb and olive oil, not the cartoon character, the actual oil. They don't mix, neither would the cartoon character. So what did I tell you today? We need an emulsifying agent, and there's no egg yolks. There's no lecithin in pesto. It's the pine nuts. 
pine nuts actually have an enzyme, I uh, forget the name of it, um, but they have an emulsifying quality. So when you whip up your basil, your olive oil, the food, not the character, with pine nuts, the pignoli, as they call it uh, in Italy, the pignoli, uh, you put the pignoli in there and they have that, those oils that act as an emulsified agent. That's why your pesto should stay together. If your pesto is breaking, you now know you don't have an emulsifying agent. And if you know someone whose pesto is breaking, oh, heaven forbid, or just wants to know about how to make better cold sauces for the summer, please like this video. It tells Facebook that you love it and you want to see more things like that. So Facebook will actually help our community grow by sharing it with more people. And if Facebook doesn't do it, you go ahead and do it. Share this video, please, with someone that you know that would like to learn a little bit more about cold sauces. And if you'd like to begin your own journey, journey toward carefree cooking, all you got to do is get my free guide. Go to fiveforksguide.com, get my free guide, the five forks to carefree cooking, and I'll help you make those decisions at each fork you come to in the road on your journey toward becoming a carefree cook. Thanks for being with me again today, everyone. Tuesday at noon Eastern on the Chef Todd Moore page, no matter what Facebook tells you, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Because remember, there's a method to your cooking success. Bye-bye, everyone.